Soil School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by The Mosaic Company. Peter Johnson at WheatPeat, realagriculture.com, as Soil School, and we are going to talk, because it is wheat harvest, what else? The value of straw. And what a better time to talk about soil health than during wheat harvest, because for most farmers, most growers, we have maximum capability to improve our soil health with the wheat crop. To start off with, wheat is awesome for soil health. Here in Ontario, as soon as we include wheat in the rotation, we get 5% more corn yield. We get, if you can imagine this, two years later, we get 11% more soybean yield. So just having wheat in the rotation, period, is a huge boost to, to the soil. But the big question always comes, so what's the value of straw? Let me start by saying that there are massive differences across North America to the value of that straw. It matters huge if I'm in a long season area like North Carolina, even Ontario or Kansas, because now we take the wheat off and we still have a huge season to do something else, to grow a cover crop. Man, we get into the short season areas, we get into the Peace River District of Alberta, there's no time to grow a cover crop. So the value of the straw in Al Alberta, where we're short season, is way more than the value of straw as we move further south because we get these other opportunities. But it's not just length of season, it's also how much moisture do you have. So here in Ontario, oh, wheat harvest, we're in the middle of it and it's just been brutal. We've had up to 11 inches of rain in the last two weeks, 225 millimeters of rainfall. It's just been a, a nightmare trying to get things done. But what that means is I get my wheat off, I can plant a cover crop, and so whether I'm in Georgia, or I'm in North Carolina, or I'm in Ohio, or I'm in Ontario, anywhere that's wet, a humid climate, eastern part of North America, cover crops really work western part of North America, the dry area, cover crops are, are just tougher to make work. They still help soil health, but you just don't have the moisture. So let's look at the value of straw. I'm here in Ontario. This is windrowed straw. We're going to sell it. Well, what's the nutrient value to begin with? And that's, a, again, not as easy an answer as you think. You can go use all the calculators. There's, I don't know, there's 27 different calculators on the internet for nutrient removal. What I'll tell you is that in those calculators, really interestingly, is the nitrogen level per ton. Now, this is short ton, 2,000 pounds. If you're in Canada, you're shaking your head saying, what the heck is a short ton? Well, unfortunately, with straw and, and going North America, we sent, tend to use short tons, pounds. In a short ton, 2,000 pounds, there is about, let's call it 14 pounds of nitrogen, somewhere between 11 and 14. It's a fairly constant number. With phosphorus, there's 3.5 pounds in a ton. And again, a pretty constant number. With sulfur, give or take, there's five pounds. But then you come to potash and you say, well, straws, huge potash removal. You're right, huge potash removal. But guess what? In a wet climate, it just rained five inches right at harvest here in Ontario. You know what happens? The plant is dead, the potash leaches out of that straw, even though it's standing there in the field. If you're in a dry climate, you might have as much as 40 pounds of potash in a ton of straw. If you're standing here in Ontario, after five inches of rain right at harvest, you might be as little as eight. That is a 500% difference in the amount of potash. The nitrogen, the phosphorus, the sulfur, they don't le leach out of the straw the same. But we know from our nutrient uptake stuff that we start losing potash in Ontario as soon as anthesis. And it's because the bottom leaves die, the rain washes the potash out. So what's the nutrient value? Well, you'll have to sort out the potash number yourself the other numbers are consistent, then just figure out a ton of straw or, or whatever your pounds per acre is, you can use those numbers to figure out the nutrient value. So then you come to what's the organic matter value, and we have no number for that. What I can tell you 
is that if you're using straw, if you're in Western Canada, where you don't get a chance to grow a cover crop, you just don't have that opportunity because you're too short season. And you're gonna say, yeah, I gotta keep the straw because that's my major source of organic matter. Well, back up two steps because believe it or not, for those of us in Ontario, those of us that can grow a cover crop, roots make five times more organic matter than the above ground part of the plant. So if I'm in a climate that I can grow a cover crop, the straw doesn't mean very much as long as I grow a cover crop after the wheat crop. The straw will still add value, but its organic matter value is less than we might actually expect. It's something, but grow a cover crop. If you can't grow a cover crop, the straw now becomes part of that organic matter, which is incredibly critical, but dang it, if you can't do the perfect job of spreading that straw out, and Johnson talks about this all the time, I love stripper heads, because stripper heads leave all the straw in place. As soon as you go to a draper or any kind of a cutter bar, an auger header, now we're pulling all that volume in. We have to spread it all back out. There should be a law that says, thou shalt not have a header wider than the combine can spread the straw. The problem with that is on windy days, the wind moves it, like it and the wind is never a constant speed. It's, and it spreads differently in the morning when it's tough than it does in the evening when it's really dry. So, it's great for Johnson to say this, it's a much tougher thing to actually accomplish than you would think. But in Western Canada, you're gonna give it credit. You have gotta do your absolute best to spread it out as evenly as you can. So there you have it. There is nutrient value in straw. If you're going to sell the straw, there is at least probably one cent per pound and you have to do your own math. The potash number makes a huge difference. But in Ontario, we generally say at least a penny a pound in the value of the nutrients in the straw, not including the micronutrients. And then you say, what's the organic matter? The organic matter is at least worth as much as the nutrients and probably twice as much as the nutrients, but that depends entirely on where you start, what your organic matter already is, and rotations, there's so many other factors there. Bottom line, straw is an incredibly valuable resource to help with organic matter, to help in terms of soil armor, but in some cases, in a wet climate, you can still sell the straw, grow a cover crop. It doesn't hurt you nearly as much as you would think. And with that, Peter Johnson at WheatPeteRealAgriculture.com. Whatever you do, grow great wheat. <laughs>